Yo, 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 what the fuck is up, man? Check this out. I get $10 for cars, I get $20 for limos. What the hell is this? That's my service truck. Here's 50 bucks, park it next to a limo. Hey there, hi there, ho there, hello there. My name's Adam. Welcome to Footy Inc. I think it's about time I give you a tour of the finished product of my service truck. We used it all summer long. I, uh, I promised a, uh, a tour as soon as I was done with everything, but we got busy for uh, the busy season with excavating and uh, fuck it, didn't get around to it. So we'll give it to you now. And uh, I feel like it's better this way. Uh, you get to see what uh, the end of the season looks like and all the tools we decided to keep in it uh, versus me telling you what I'm gonna put in there and didn't use, yada, yada, yada. So the first door here, we have our tool chest, beautiful, full of tools. I'll give you a zoomed in view of that after a little bit. Second door, we have our uh, whiteboard, very important to have, keep notes. Need more oil, need more coolant, need to put a shovel in here or whatever. Put it on the board, that way you remember. Up top, we've got our charging uh, station and we keep a bag for Milwaukee tools here. Sawzall, tire inflator, that little tire inflator for Milwaukee. It's M12. We got some hearing protection. Uh, we keep our rags and hand cleaner. This is the last door. If you're going in before you got in the truck, a lot of times it's right there. Wash your hands, get rid of it. Uh, we have our first aid kit back there. Here's our triangles and such, in case uh, you know you broke down on the side of the road. Got to have that. Uh, we have our step stool here, and I keep a hard hat in here because you never know when you're going to go into a mine site where you need a hard hat. You know, construction. You should have a hard hat with you. Side door. Uh, we ended up remaking this side door uh, because the bottom of this is rot out. These napite have double walled panels, great place for shit to get caught behind. You know, not to mention, I don't know, this thing's probably 20 years old or so at least. Uh, brought it out along the bottom here. So what it is, we just got some 8 inch plate, which works really nice. It's uh, still, it's pretty stout as it is, but then once you add this border around here, this is a one inch, eighth inch by one piece, and we just bent it all the way around. So it fits up nice next to the gasket. Uh, the doors for this thing are an enormous amount of money. It's like the kind of money your uncle spends at the strip club after he's been kicked out by your aunt for the 32nd time because he will not quit drinking Budweiser's in the garage. Uh, my name is Dave, and uh, I like to party. Yeah, aerosol cans, stuff like that in here. We'll get a closer look at that later or whatever, but this door right here is just sweet because we have a nice flat work surface. It's contained, this lip allows it to be contained. We just have a stitch weld, so, you know, anything, any water or something needed to get out of here could, theoretically. Um, but yeah, it's super, super solid. We added a little heavier chains to each side to it or whatever. Uh, nice little workbench. All your screws, nuts, bolts are contained right here. I think this is a better solution than the door from the factory in the first place. And that's, this is what we have on the other side too, because the other door was rotted out just as bad. A pair of doors for this thing was, like over a thousand bucks. Uh, I think I have maybe 200 into these real nice setups. And then you just cut it out, put your latch in. If you know what you're doing, a little cut and trace. Your old doors will make this a pattern. Sweet deal. All right, final door on the driver's side. Uh, back here, we've got some jumper cables. We keep an extra hitch, like a piddle hitch. We've got two heavy duty jacks, Harbor Freight Specials. You got the 20 ton and I think it's a 10 ton, something like that. Anyways, file jacks. Uh, we've got wood blocking. I keep a random uh, cross cut saw in here. We've got some files for the chainsaw, handles for the jacks. Um, this is kind of like a nice catch all cabinet. It's big. We put uh, gas cans in here, like when we're doing chainsaw saw work or whatever. We keep the chainsaw gas in here. The plate tamper, we keep a small container of gas or whatever, just a regular gas can in there normally. But stupid to carry them around if you don't need them or whatever. But back here we've got our spotlights, nice big bars. Again, another Harbor Freight special. Uh, LED light for the tail, for the tail light. It's not the tail light. Uh, what an idiot! Uh, LED license plate light. Back here too, we got the step. Uh, so instead of keeping the hitch in here all the time, you got the step. Nice and easy to get up in. Or Bob's your uncle up in there. So I'd like to rebuild this. I think this will be a project this winter. This is how it's been since I got it all kind of boogered up like this. And I really would like something more stout, maybe with a workbench, um, maybe a place to put a vise, something like that. So I just don't want to make the truck that much longer than it is. So it's kind of like a conundrum because it's 
11 foot service bed. It, it is only a single cab, but it's still a really long rig. So any bit extra sticking back here is just like parking this thing in a parking lot. You know, my fat ass goes to McDonald's or whatever. Like this is a two parking spot rig right here. You know, then you're the asshole on the local Facebook page. who's the look at all these city park. Anyways, uh, in the back here, you can see we've got a little crane dingo here. Big, long, black crane dingo. Nice crane action. Um, it's come in handy. It's got a, it's electric, just a small one. But uh, it's, uh, it's pretty stout. It's useful for swinging stuff in the back. Or uh, like one time we had to carry a culvert and it was kind of like, mm, needed Viagra kind of deal or whatever. And we were able to just swing the crane out. Hold the back here so it didn't bounce and it wasn't crazy or whatever. Put a flag on it, everything's legal, it's nice. Work our way down the passenger side of the truck here. Again, light, crane dingo, she's a good This is our crane rigging and straps, chains, door. Uh, we also keep the fire extinguisher in there, gotta have one of those. Control for the crane, the view. Uh, rigging stuff, we got this. We this rigging deal off Amazon, it's pretty sweet. We lift cabinets for a local telecommunications company. Uh, we do some removal for them. And I bought this, but you can only get these in like five foot lengths is the shortest. So I bought this, cut two feet off them, and it's a nice little rigging setup so that we can safely lift these telecommunications. Cabinets up. I got this guy right here, the magnet deal or whatever. This one gets like 1,300 pounds, and so far it has lived up to that. We hooked this crane and no not this crane we hooked that magnet and a chain up to my mini excavator and we put it on a manhole cover and yes we had the black top off but those manhole covers are like stuck down you know like we're talking the whole base and everything and it pulled the base with the manhole cover still attached because the manhole cover didn't want to pop out it pulled that whole deal up out of the hard packed gravel and stuff i was pretty impressed with that uh, some soft straps and bigger chains then we have these boxes right here. These things are sweet. So this is where I keep like small ratchet straps. Plano stickers off it. Oh, there it is. I just got this at the local uh, like fleet farm or whatever, you know, like their fishing sit, their fish, fishing and hunting aisle. And it's by the tackle boxes. These are heavy duty plastic, nice latch, decent hinge, you know, like it's not a forever deal or whatever. Got this little area on top where you can keep shit to or whatever, a nice little storage area. But it has a rubber gasket, so this is weather tight. Bam, you got your little tray here. I don't really use these much, or I haven't had a use for that yet, but this rubber gasket means all of your straps and stuff stay dry in there, and they're not gonna end up all wet and soggy and rusty and shit. Nice. Here I have my e track box. So in the back of the truck here, we'll show it, we'll do a tour of the back here in a bit, uh, is the e track stuff. So. Back there, I have e track all along both sides, and I keep extra accessories in here. And I tried to be smart about it, make sure they lined up side to side. So, like these guys right here, I can clip this in to the e track, I can set a board on here, and I can have a platform that sits above the toolboxes. So, if I did need to carry something on here, I could without having it sit directly on top of the toolboxes. Um, haven't had a use for it yet. But I feel like someday it's coming. They weren't that expensive, so I thought it was a smart buy. Then I got some more E-Track, just uh, tie downs. They just clip in so you can write the strap down. I also have a hook. Um, actually, what I ended up doing, I bought a couple of these because I was going to cut that off and use it to make accessories, which I'll show you one in the back. Then I was able to find a pack of 10 uh, blanks. So I just keep the hook. You never know when you're gonna need it. Side cabinet. Again, replace the door. It's got this nice eighth inch plate, eighth inch sheet or whatever. That's uh, stout, nice workbench area. Here we keep long stuff. <laughs> Besides my pants. How about new? Anyway, uh, we've got bolt cutters. Uh, you never know when you're gonna need to do a B&E. Stick for the, uh, for the laser level, we like to keep in here. Hatchet, big pry bars. I've got a battery charger. On here we actually have a power inverter and sometimes we carry a generator with. You never know when you're gonna need to charge a battery or whatever. Uh, just a basic camping lawn chair. You never know when you're just gonna be uh, sitting around having a sandwich, you know, looking on your phone, whatever. Subscribing and liking to Caputi Inc. Maybe doing a bit of commenting, telling me how much of an idiot or how handsome I am. Anyways, uh, Vice, this is a 
hitch vise. It goes in your receiver hitch uh, from Harbor Freight. Have yet to use it. Uh, I would call that a blessing. But uh, we also keep a cock gun in here. I got a magnet, you know. Oh, we spilled some shit. Fat, don't need to bend over. Um, we do some a bunch of work with the telecommunication company we do. It's nice to have some caulk because sometimes we have to seal up holes in place when we're finishing up something. Some kick. Um, yeah, I keep a spare. I've got a spare tool bag in here. There's nothing in it at the moment. You got it. In case you can't get the service truck to where you're going, throw some shit in the tool bag and put your fat ass over there. All right, next door up. Uh, this is where we keep the trinkety shit. I am a sucker for these things right here. Not specifically hose clamps, but you can you can sell me a kit that's got 500 different assorted hose clamps in it. Uh, I'm buying it. So I've got hose clamps, cotter pins, O-rings, uh, large O-ring selection. Uh, we've got cushion clamps here, zip ties, extra batteries. Uh, over here, these are another thing I found. These I got off Amazon, I wanna say, from Sheffield, it's a field box it's called. Again, nice heavy, again, O-ringed. Uh, this is my tape box, caution tape, gorilla tape, masking tape, Teflon tape. I would keep electrical tape in there, but that is kept in our electrical kit here. This again, found in the cushion vinyl. Uh, just a plain old box here or whatever. Uh, I haven't filled it out to its full potential yet. It's got the front here. Sweet deal. Uh, here I keep tech screws, but these are empty. I haven't filled them up yet. Those will just probably end up being like random screws and bolts will go in there. Just haven't gotten around to need it. This area again, empty. Another place we can put some sweet stuff. In here is where the magic happens. We've got weather pack, weather seal, you know, uh, shrink wrap, butt connectors, eyelets, all that stuff. Here's another one. These are just shrink butt connectors. Uh, these are push pins, you know, so if you had to unpin a plug for like a, a harness, like a pass-through harness, a uh, nice pin set, metal pin set. Uh, Nipex side cutters here, They're big and small. This right here, that's the ticket. Steelman, okay, I don't know. Uh, my buddy Tone gave me one of these that was a Matco one, and that's the one I use in my shop kit. This is the one we have on the road. This is awesome for crimps. It's just for crimping, it's awesome. Fine strippers, some electrical tape, uh, sweet little setup. Again, this sucker here, it's got a nice overlay. I don't think this one's full ring. It is not, but you can see it's got a, but it's got like a double seal situation going on here. So I think it'll stay pretty, pretty weather tight. That goes in there, as well as we have a power probe, the essential tool for electric problems, diagnosis, try to figure some shit out. Front door. Our greasy cabinet. Here, let me adjust you a little bit. Okay, greasy cabinet. We keep, this is a piece of plywood, and it's groove plywood flipped upside down, so anything that gets underneath it can travel out these small pinholes because the floor of this cabinet was in rougher shape. It's still solid, but it's still got, it's got some rough pinholes in it. All right, so we have our grease box. I have a milk crate here that's got like quarts of like 5W20, 1030, power steering fluid. Uh, it's got coolant in there. I got another jug of coolant there. Here's our two and a half gallons. I keep uh, some hydraulic fluid, some engine oil, um, Hytran, high, high stuff like that for a dozer. Here's the grease gun area, and that's the grease gun area. The gloves we wear when we do greasing, because they get sh shitty. The grease gun, this is greasy. We keep the this guy here for cleaning out around grease circs on the excavator, the dozer and stuff. We get the dirt off them. All these are greasy tools. We keep a funnel right here on a small hanger, and that hanger hangs over our drain pan so that our drain pan, anything that drips off that, goes in the drain pan, drain pan on hand. It's nice, so this cabinet is meant to be your oily, dirty, greasy cabinet. So hopefully the rest of it isn't. In the back of the truck, E-Track, just like that E-Trailer track or whatever you call that stuff. Uh, we have one that's flushed with the top of the boxes there. I just use really short self-tappers to put it in there. These up here, probably gonna be one of the more asked about things. 
they came from some horse website, but they're e-track bucket holders. I think they were like 40 bucks a piece. But if you put the track at the right height, it holds your five gallon buckets just sweet. We keep a hydraulic and engine oil and a uh, spare bucket to just put junk oil in. We rarely are carrying a chainsaw with us, but if we do, I don't want it bouncing around in the back of the truck. So, and I don't want to put it in a side cabinet where the chain can cut stuff up. So we put our chainsaw in a chainsaw holder again. It's an E-Track specific piece. I'm not sure where I got it, Google it. Um, we'll move you over a little bit here. Here is just a piece of receiver, uh, re a pre-made receiver hitch. And then I got some blanks on eBay or whatever, or Amazon that were just E-Track blanks. We just welded them to the backside of this. So when we need a ball hitch, it's there for us. It's, you know, obviously it could get stolen. People are pieces of shit. But that is either there or the step, which is in the back of the truck, which is in the hitch right now. So we can step up in here. Uh, that way it's not bouncing around. Yeah, you could throw it in a cabinet. It's heavy, it could bounce around. I like having it easily accessible or whatever. So you can just switch them out. You know where the pin is, you know where the, you know where the, the cotter pin is for it or whatever. It's just there, it's nice. All right, here's the driver's side of the truck. We have a like 88 gallon fuel tank, something like that. Uh, wired in, it's on a breaker or fused or whatever. It, it runs on a relay. It does not go direct to the battery. I have big power running back to this cabinet over here. I'll show you that. And off there, we have a heavy duty relay that turns it on and off and it is has its own secret switch. So it's not easy to steal. A uh, nice light bar. We have the strobe light and I built this headache rack. The part everybody's gonna ask me about this hose reel, it is fucking awesome. Uh, it comes, I think I paid, I bought a couple of them and I've paid between like $290 and $325. The price, price happened to fluctuate at the time that I bought it or whatever. Awesome, 50 foot reel, comes with the hose, comes with the nozzle, um, the little stopper deal or whatever. I ended up having to move the hose holder or the nozzle holder to the other side, but it's solid, it's stout, it's retractable. Um, it just works freaking awesome. You just have to get your hose made from your tank to the pump or from the pump to the reel. You have to find some hose or I think it's pipe thread on there. So it's not like it's rocket appliance. Rocket appliance is um, just sweet though. Uh, you just park, you don't have to get so close to the truck. I think they make like a hundred foot reel too. They also make one I do believe that has a pump and a filter built into it. These things worth the money. Everybody, every contractor I've talked to, uh, a bunch of my buddy contractors have ordered them. They they just fucking love them. You don't have to get the truck so close. You pull that fucker out 50 feet. You know, there's, oh God, I'm not close enough. So yeah, it's wired into the truck. It's just awesome. Uh, more E-Track over here. I don't know, can we see this? Yeah, we got some E-Track over here. And we have a shovel and a rake holder. So you have those with you at all times. Our main toolbox, uh, this does lock. Otherwise, these drawers, if you're going around corners, are trying to come out, especially this guy that's full of sockets, nice and heavy. So when we're not using it, we lock it. <clears throat> Top drawer, we have our pressing wrenches, vice grips, uh, wire stripper cutter, a dikes. These are special tools for the telecommunication cabinets. Keep a couple markers up here. Um, this is a nozzle for a, uh, <clears throat> a black top sprayer or whatever. Those always seem to fall off, so we keep spare ones in the, the top drawer here so you know where they're at. Screwdriver drawer, enough said. Extra tape measure. Uh, we keep, keep a little electrical tape in there. Utility knife. Feeler gauges, you never know. Uh, we got some picks in here. Pick set. Uh, this stuff was Quinn, so this is Harbor Freight. This. I did a demo on a trailer and these were sitting inside to be thrown away. A whole brand new set of Milwaukee. Uh, these are sweet. This one, what's this little square drive here or whatever? Yeah, a little square drive action. Then you have your, <clears throat> all your typical Phillips. Flat, standard slot, however you want to say it, depending on what century you're born in. Chisels, some pry bars, some smaller pry bars. We have some brushes, roll pin punches. Uh, Got the old uh, turbo torch there, and apparently a golf ball if you're trying to get in nine holes. I'm married, so I'm just trying to get in three. 
but I only can get into it's unfortunate anyway wrenches we have our metric drawer these are just your standard Pittsburgh I think they're the professional line maybe but whatever maybe not I don't know tell me in the comments uh, and then we have a ratcheting wrench set from I do believe these are gear wrench yes they are we've got a gear wrench set we keep some of these bigger metric wrenches in here as well our standard drawer same deal Pittsburgh's ratcheting wrenches and we keep an extra selection of three quarter inch in here because uh, our skid loader tracks uh, use a three quarter inch to tighten and loosen yada, yada, yada. socket drawer here let's tip her down a little bit this is the most full drawer get you a little better view here we have quarter drive metric standard tall short with extensions we have impact these are the only chrome sockets in here the rest are impact oh, I'm a liar I'm a liar we got a spark plug set and our shorts for these for the metric and standard 3h drive are chrome sockets we keep just a regular ratchet like such we keep flexi head as far as our quarter inch drive ratchet just a regular these are all hard to break stuff I would like to buy better tools you know but these work so they're pretty freaking good tools and if you lose them I didn't just lose a $200 ratchet I believe these are like Pittsburgh or something maybe not even what do we got here what brand uh, okay made in Taiwan sorry for being a fucking communist uh, then we have our half inch drive stuff metric standard with a big ratchet that is extendable this is sweet Ooh. Oh. Ready to go to war extensions uh, then we have some Allen head we've got some more Allen head and then we have some these are like the tamper proof bolt ones I don't know why I'm so fancy but that's what I have some more extensions then you know you have your obvious you know you've got your adapters you've got some swivels you know just like all the pertinence screwdriver driver if you will what do we call that bottom drawer uh, hammers of all sorts unibits uh, these are for the saws all obviously then we have some drill bits and we have our case that has all our quarter inch drive like our impact driver extensions brand new should have got this sooner uh, this is a 3h drive stubby stubby m12 um, when we're working on this these telecommunication cabinets they the room to get the bolts where they're bolted down to the top of the cabinet is really short so I went with the stubby here or whatever um, we have more stuff we keep at the shop there's no need to keep these big impacts if we had a big problem in the field obviously we'd load up extra tools our impact driver m12 our drill m12 uh, everything m12 so I don't have to keep all the m18 batteries in here too and then we can lock this up so they don't roll up top here magnets those are just stuck to the side on the side of the cabinet we've got our magnetic tray bolts in it down here this is a power distribution block I think I got these off of Amazon there's a positive and a negative one um, this brings in power directly from the batteries but it does have one of these breakers like a hundred amp breaker up by the battery this breaker is specifically for the crane over there so if there's ever a problem it just pops the breaker here and doesn't light my truck on fire um, up here is a heavy duty relay here's the keys for the box so that we can lock it get those out of the way. here's a heavy duty continuous cycle relay or continuous duty relay for the uh, fuel pump for the diesel transfer tank uh, we've got our inverter here what do we got there what's it say I feel like it was like a 3000 watt inverter oh whatever got a big inverter works nice here we're in the cab of the old girl uh, we got the uh, nylite panel handy Strobe, backup light, empty switch at the moment. Um, that'll be, you know, if you wanted to add some extra lights or whatever. Or if uh, if I didn't have a hidden switch for my diesel fuel pump, that could be a good place to put that too. But it is not. Don't be trying. Uh, center console I got off of Amazon, I do believe. <clears throat> it's like 150 bucks. This one was on sale because it was gray, which uh, worked out for me. This is a seat cover. Uh, another Amazon or eBay buy. It fits really nice. I don't remember what kind it is. 
Um, the only downside to this thing here, this was a nice center console. It sits in place the way you want it to. This folds forward, clipboard if you needed to do some clipboard things or whatever. The cup holders on this are super shallow, so I cut them off. I bought some aftermarket plastic ones, Amazon, eBay, whatever. Cut the bottoms of these off and epoxied it in place. Let's see if I can get this out of here. Yeah, so you can see there, I just cut the bottoms off and epoxied new ones on there. So now these are nice and deep. They fit you a big buddy. Big gulp. Huh? Big gulps, huh? All right. Well, see you later. So you can be hydrated phone fits perfect in there or it lays in here nice if you need to keep some gloves whatever i suppose the last but not least of the tool truck service truck tour would be the aesthetics uh we painted the truck when i bought it it was white white box white cab uh we buzzed that down painted the cab it's a little little surface rust is all box sandblasted painted, replaced doors that needed to be replaced. At one point, replaced the whole floor of one of the cabinets. Uh, it does have a brush guard. This is off a, a newer Ford, like an 11 to 17 or something like that. It has the correct mounts to mount bolt on where the bumper bolt's on. And then there's normally bottom bars here. We just cut those off. We fit a deer with it. It didn't bend or move. Uh, it stayed where it was supposed to, so it clearly works still. Wheel sandblasted and painted. We added some steps. Because uh, we're fat guys, a little easier to get up in the truck. Obviously, we built the headache rack, blasted paint in the box. You can see that in my build series. Um, we added fender flares. These are just uh, eBay, Amazon fender flares. They should really learn to sell just the fronts or just the rears. I've had to sell rear sets of these, like three of them, because I build flatbeds and I don't need the backs. I just use the front. So um, it is a 7.3. Um, it's got an automatic in it, four-wheel drive, manual floor shift, four-wheel drive. Windows tinted in this bad boy. I believe they're 20%. I was thinking about going the 5%. I guess if you were doing it illegal anyways, you might as well just go the 5% I pushed out. So, but I think it looks great. So, hope you enjoyed the tour. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. See you on the next one.